Now, with me in the studio, I have Janke Ertel. She's from the German Marshall Fund think tank in Berlin, and she is one of the people who signed that letter. Welcome, Janke. It's not often that you have high-ranking diplomats uh, signing an open letter of this kind. Why do you think this case is attracting so much of international attention? Well, first of all, we have two Canadian citizens in jail for more than six weeks under dire conditions. That in itself is a reason to be active internationally. But one of them, Michael Kovrick, is not only a diplomat, a former diplomat, but he's also a researcher. That makes him basically one of us. So that's where the story becomes more relevant and, and more directly related to what we are working on as researchers. And the belief is that maybe this is a retaliation by China for the, uh, the, the Chinese uh, executive who was held in Canada, but be, things being as they are, will this letter make a difference, do you think? Will it impress uh, President Xi Jinping? What this letter does, is it shows unity. It shows unity of more than 140 people that usually don't agree on a whole lot when it comes to China. This is a wide spectrum of China watchers that have agreed to sign this letter. And I think that's the main point. Um, also, the reaction of the Chinese foreign ministry immediately shows that this was noted and it, was not, it didn't go down well. Um, so I think that's an important factor. It is seen and it is putting um, yeah, at, at a cost to, to this, these actions. So the tensions have been... Uh, growing between the two countries, Beijing and, and also uh, uh, Canada. To what extent is this incident going to kind of alienate the Western world from China? I think, first of all, it's important to underline that the tensions have been growing between China and the US for a long time, and not necessarily between China and Canada, mm -hmm. which is more a, a pawn in this entire game in a much larger spectrum. So I think this is the message that it sends to countries like Germany, countries that are in between and that could be caught in the middle. It could become very, very uncomfortable in the future. So that is exactly the elephant in the room, of course, is the, uh, is the United States, that the tensions between China and the US are, uh, are playing out. Uh, in neighboring China. Now, what do the arrests of these two Canadians mean for other foreigners who are working in China? In reality, what kind of risks do people face when they are working in China? For working in China and researching in China, the space has been shrinking for quite some time already. But what I think is important to underline in this specific instance is that no one wants to be fear-mongering at this mm. point in time. But a clear assessment, a reassessment of what is at stake and what could be the elements of arbitrary detention needs to be made for everyone at this point in time. Right. Janka Oetl from the German Marshall Fund think tank here in Berlin. Thank you very much for your thoughts. Thank you.